Hunter and my love the life for Trisha. Today we're going to bring you a spoiler free movie review of The Flash. I'm not sure if movie review is exactly the right thing to say, but sort of reactions or initial thoughts. I'm a huge Batman fan, and Michael Keaton was my Batman as a kid. I was five years old when I saw 1989 Michael Keaton Batman in theaters. Of course, I saw Batman Returns in theaters as well, and that was the Batman that turned live action Batman from. You know, the corny Adam West, which, you know, much love, much respect, but it to totally turned it from that to kind of what it is today, which is a dark, serious franchise. Malky was the first one to do that, and it was very impactful for me. Kind of led to Batman made series, and it's kind of part of why I'm a Batman collector today. So I had a lot of expectations, things I wanted to see. I didn't really see all of them. But in this video, we're going to be doing completely spoiler-free. Quick little talk about what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, how the acting was, action, etc. In the next day or two, we'll try to do a spoiler-filled video. And there, boy, there are many cool things to talk about in this film. A lot of Easter eggs, a lot of fun surprises, a lot of really cool things for the hardcore DC fans out there. That's for sure. So, I walked away... I liked it. I'm not going to say I absolutely loved it, but I'm on the higher end of liking it, which I'm happy to say because I kept saying I don't think it's going to be a good movie. I think I'm going to enjoy it. It's going to be a fun ride, get a nostalgia, goosebumps. And I'm going to leave entertained, but the thing is, it's a pretty bad movie. That was what I expected. I think it surpassed my expectations at least a little bit. Bear in mind, I went with the bar kind of low. I mean, what did you think? I, I liked it, and I'm on the higher end of liking it, but low loving it. I had no ideas or thoughts on the movie in general. I only went because you forced me to. Again. Sounds familiar. <laughs> but do you regret going? Did you have a little fun? No, I actually really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more than what I, I thought I would. So for me, trailers this movie dropped, what, like two, two and a half years ago. Um, I remember the little snippet we got from Ezra Miller way back in the day at DC Cinecon or whatever it was. DC fandom, that's right, and we saw the little snippet, and then, of course, there was all these problems with Ezra Miller behind the scenes, and they seemed to change the plot time and time and time again. I think at one point, Michael Keaton was going to be the new guy behind the scenes of Justice League moving forward. Then they wanted Ben Affleck to keep going. Now James Gunn is doing his reboot. So this movie has gone through a pretty long journey as far as being changed and almost being scrapped. They scrapped this Batgirl movie that had Michael Keaton in it, which they spent 70 plus million dollars on just because I guess this movie doesn't lead into that anymore, which is a shame. But they all scrapped this because Ezra Miller time and time again. But we're getting a little off target here. The movie itself, Batman, Michael Keaton coming back. If you told me two or three years ago there's going to be a movie with Ben Affleck, Batman, and Michael Keaton, Batman, I would have been like, shut up, you are lying, that is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, but bam, here it is today. Michael Keaton back in the suit by itself is something amazing. Dude is 70 years old or so, and, you know, plays the role better than I would have expected. Ben Affleck also back as Batman, meh, not into that much, but still it was cool to see him back in a suit for what I assume is his final hurrah. I believe this fulfills his contractual obligation as far as DC films that he was, the quantity he was obligated to be inside. Since this is a spoiler free review, we can't really discuss the plot, although one of my biggest complaints is the trailer did give the majority of the film away. I watched trailer one, trailer two, trailer three over and over again. And, and of course he had to make us watch it yes, constantly, but so... I didn't make you watch it at quarter speed like I did myself and analyze certain parts. But as the movie's progressing, I kind of thought to myself, oh, this hasn't happened yet, oh, this hasn't happened yet, this also happened. And most of what we saw kind of led to the end, which is a little disappointing. But there was a ton of stuff that I wasn't aware of. Nice Easter eggs and surprises. If you're a hardcore DC fan over DC films, over the many, I don't know many many years you'll enjoy a lot of the little easter eggs and references out there so i want to talk about a few things the action the acting the cgi and the overall plot and then we'll conclude with would we recommend you to go see this movie so 
for the longest time, I had expectations of wanting to see Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton interacting. But honestly, that didn't really make a lot of sense. Because Barry Allen is the only one that can cross between the two different multiverses. So how could they interact? You know, I get it. I guess in my head, we had Spider-Man No Way Home recently with all three versions of Spider-Man. I was kind of hoping for Batman No Way Home with a bunch of different Batmans working together. And it's not exactly what you get in this movie, but back on topic. So, the action. What did you think about the action? Mookie is 70 years old. Some of the things they had him doing in there was a little bit far-fetched, preposterous, I was and say, yeah. it pure. Actually, him doing. It. Yeah, pure CGI. Pretty much any time he yeah. was in action, it was fake, and you kind of expect that nowadays. Sometimes it's even hard to tell, like but, what little reality they use in the film to make all this other stuff happen. But then at the same time, I mean, he had been doing it for so long anyway, in being Batman. So it's like him being older, and you know retired or whatever um he still has the the moves the automatic response yeah there's some stuff that they didn't really tell me is how long has he been retired that i guess it doesn't really matter that much but the longer he'd be retired the less likely he'd be to just put the suit back on and you know get nuts again um but when he is out there he did some amazing things that even the Ben Affleck Batman would have trouble doing. I mean, jumping up in the air, grabbing people, throwing them down, grappling them, throwing ten batterings at once. I mean, amazing, awesome stuff. But a little much for... It's a 70-year-old actor, but I believe he's supposed to be playing a 60-year-old Batman, as weird as that is, because it's 2023 right now, and this movie takes place in 2013, so I'm assuming it's a 70-year-old Michael Keaton supposed to be playing a 60-year-old Bruce Wayne in this universe, which is eh, kind of interesting. I liked the fact that they uh, he he used his style of moves versus no oh, yes the there different was Batman. definitely signature things that screened Michael Keaton. I love seeing Batarang, the cave, the, the the car, all the familiar things. Very very cool. Now what about the other characters in there? I kind of enjoyed the flashes running around doing different things with the Speed Force. Some of it was dumb, some of it was good. The actual fight of the Kryptonians, I thought it was pretty cool for the mm -hmm. most part. Supergirl, I mean, once again, the action, it was cool, but it was just a big CGI mm -hmm. fest, you know, yeah. just punching, jumping, blah, 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 like, I, it didn't have me super invested. It all just happened so fast, they, I don't want to get too much into the plot, but the movie is not short, it's two hours and 20 minutes, two hours, 25 minutes, something like that. And honestly, it flew by for me. At one point, I thought to myself, oh, I bet the movie's about halfway over, and then I looked at my phone, just for curiosity, <laughs> and it was like 20 minutes before the end. I was like, oh, wow. Almost everything's already happened at this point. Okay, I thought there was like still quite a bit of movie left. Uh, so it did not drag. Uh, the pacing probably goes a little too fast. I would love to see an extended version, as I sure hope we get one. Not a Zack Snyder's <laughs> Justice League type of extended version, although, my God, I would eat that up. But I hope that they can show us, you know, some more parts with Keaton, maybe some more stuff with Affleck. Who knows? The action at the beginning with Affleck mm. driving the bike, it was a cool little car scene, but once again, a ton of CGI. And, I mean, there was some stuff that was kind of far-fetched there. He didn't get dragged yeah. through the street with a grapple. I mean, on the highways, they, I don't. I, I know he's Batman. He's armored a little bit, but yeah, it's a little much. His superpower is just being rich. Yeah, so. and not being invincible. Nope. So, overall, action, fair. Maybe a little better than fair, but a lot of it was CGI heavy. It's really all you could see like, was... That's most movies nowadays. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it, I get it. And the CGI wasn't... Horrible, but eh, noticeable, yes. Not as bad as Zack Snyder's Justice League. Some of that stuff was really, really noticeable, but they had a much smaller budget. Eh, just a lot, lot of CGI. A lot of CGI, let's just say that. And it was very obvious. It wasn't like, oh, wow, I can't believe he could do that. No, it was like, oh, my OK did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about the humor in the film. We already covered action and the CGI, which was good definitely not great and there were some parts where it was field maybe unfinished but no this is finished finished product I don't hate the CGI by any means but anyway humor 
So the movie has a lot of humor, and tell you the truth, a nice chunk of it actually hit pretty good. Mm -hmm. I heard her laughing two or three different times <laughs> of the film, and I found myself kind of chuckling, and I'd say probably 75% of yeah. the humor actually worked and hit pretty well mm -hmm. for me. Barry Allen and the younger Barry Allen. The younger Barry Allen is extremely obnoxious, but not accidentally. They wanted to be that way, yeah. and it works. So, I mean, some of that was maybe a little bit too much as far as, like, the humor is. Like, eh. Yeah, but when you delve into the psychological part of no, it, you understand. It but that goes into the spoilers, so. Yeah, but it makes perfect sense why he's obnoxious. Honestly, yes. the Barry Allen in Justice League came off as kind of obnoxious at first. He was yes. so surprised by everything and impressed you know I, I have no friends and oh that's so cool oh, that's your signal you know the stuff like that he was <laughs> that's you yeah he was like a little, little kid and this one was kind of the same way yeah. although a little bit further on that side which makes sense because he's i don't know 10 years younger roughly i think he's supposed to be nine years younger in the universe i think the movie is supposed to take place in 2022 originally then they go back to 2013 i believe that's accurate numbers and I'm just like, but, but honestly it doesn't even really matter Roughly, he's 10 years younger, so it's a younger version of him, and he's always been socially awkward in these films, but he's obnoxious, and it works most of the time. So, like, some of the jokes really work. They were talking about, in this other universe, how uh, in the movie Back to the Future, Marty McFly was not played by Michael J. Fox, but somebody yeah. else, and they catch yeah. up saying that, saying that, but... Yeah. I kind of enjoyed some of that humor and like his roommates and yes. stuff. Oh, it was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but that, 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 that's, that's not a spoiler at all. No, no it was, but it was a lot good. of the humor worked. And there's part where he's like, "The suit, it's so tight, it hurts." And this is the younger Barry Allen trying the suit on. And he's like, "You know where it hurts, Barry? It hurts in my dick." He's like, oh, "I don't need really to hear that. Stop saying that." And it's like, okay, like it actually was kind of funny. I know that sounds very juvenile, but it, it, it came off. And there's numerous parts where the humor it worked. And I'm actually yeah picky about humor as far as I don't laugh at movies very often. I don't I didn't find myself like laughing out loud. But a lot of times I'm just like, eh, stupid. Eh, not funny. Eh, tried too hard. Some of it was stupid and some of it they did try too hard, but a lot of it actually worked. So I'm yeah. gonna give the the humor aspect Yeah. Probably like an eight out of ten actually. Yeah. If we're gonna rate every section of the action, eh, maybe like a seven, six point five out of ten. I mean it wasn't bad. The CGI probably like a five I I it's better than the thing below. Okay. Well <laughs> I mean watching a rock on our driveway versus a movie is better than the thing below. If you guys want to see a bad movie, check that movie out. But I would say rate the action probably like a six point five out of ten. Uh, CGI probably a five, and that's probably about right. I mean, some of it was I really it was good. good. Some of it was actually really, okay. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh on the CGI, but some of it was very yeah. noticeable. Um, but that, <clears throat> I mean, when you have lightning blasts and you know laser eyes, of course it's like oh, obviously it's CGI. But it was not you. You couldn't notice. You couldn't tell. That it was this Barry and this Barry, the two different actors at two different times trying to no, interact. That, that yeah, was no, no, amazing. No, but that's technology that seemed like they were doing fine on like 20 years ago. Uh, parent Trap? Well, but, like with whoever that chick I, is. But I, I don't like I'm just that. Saying it wasn't, they've mastered being able to have two different people like in the screen at the same time without looking bad. Not completely while fully ago. mastered. And I feel like this no, one this one did well very was. well. Like you couldn't tell anything was superimposed or cut on top of something. Mm -hmm. The two bear out together look flawless and yeah. nothing, a hint of any fake, which is yep. pretty well done. Yep. Supergirl just literally hovering there in her suit looked faker than it, that. Oh, well, yeah. Um, action. Upper, medium, 6.57. Mm -hmm. CGI, eh, maybe I'll six. You convinced me. It's, it's not bad. It's just you're well aware when they're CGI, which doesn't necessarily mean it's always bad, but there was a lot of, like, you know, very obviously video game looking parts and stuff. At the humor, I personally say eight out of ten. I mean, what do you? Yeah. How would you rate the action? Uh, I say six point five ish. I mean, I don't really care Maybe for the seven. action much. Well, that's like uh, I some of the best I, parts. I enjoy the scenarios, like you know Zod and um, whatever the other chick's name is. You know, bringing them back. So which I love. They brought General Zod, same actor. Fiora, mm -hmm. I assume the same it, actress. Yeah, that she was that like puffier and older. older. And that <laughs> giant Kryptonian guy who was a Man of Steel. I don't remember his name. He's probably the uh, same one from the older films. I just can't think of my name off the top of my head. But I love that they had those characters back with a yes. bunch of other Kryptonians as well. It's kind of like, oh, what if General Zod and his army came, and there was no Clark Kent or Kal El to stop them? I think actually he's 
pretty cool premise. Um, and then we have the, I mean, how do you rate the humor? I, I liked it. it <laughs> I mean, me. usually I don't like stupid humor like that, but I was definitely laughing. Yeah, no, yeah. Some, some, like I said, some of it's stupid. <laughs> but it worked. It worked like yeah. I found it. You know what? That, that's amusing. I liked it. And yeah. I'm kind of dry when it comes to my movies. Like a lot of humor is usually doesn't work for me. Most of it worked here. So now I wanted to talk about the acting. Personally, I thought Barry Allen, Ezra Miller, and I know so many people hate Ezra Miller and won't even watch this movie because they don't want to support him. Blah 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 blah. I don't look at it that way. I'm not a huge fan of Ezra Miller. I didn't hate him in Justice League. He was, he was good. He was pretty good in this, too. Um, mm -hmm. I like Warner Brothers. I like DC. I like Batman. I like The Flash. This is why I'm seeing this movie, to support those things, not specifically Ezra Miller. I bet Ezra Miller, all of his tobaccos and legal troubles and craziness is probably going to cost this movie well over $100 million. I'm not even joking. I've seen so many people online saying they refuse to watch this movie because of that. So be it. Your loss. The acting, I thought Ezra Miller actually did a pretty good job, both as the older Barry Allen and as the younger Barry Allen, the obnoxious Barry Allen. Actually, he did a really good job for both of them. I have mm -hmm. almost yes. very little problems with that. Yes. Ben Affleck. I mean, something was, was off about Ben Affleck for me. When he was actually Batman, I thought a couple times, like, is that even Ben Affleck in that, or is that the stuntman? I mean, I think it was Ben Affleck, but his voice didn't sound right. He didn't quite well, look right. He yeah, also seemed he, a lot thinner than I remember him. Yes, well, he's giant like older. Superman. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is I'm, what is it? Seven We're, let's years. Not since do the whole... Seven years <laughs> out since Batman vs Superman came out, and it's unfortunate that this universe has gone the route that it did. I personally think Gal Gadot, yeah. Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill could have made an awesome franchise, but it just ever yeah. since. I mean, I hate to say it. Man of Steel was a good starting point. Batman Superman, big division on the fans. Then Justice League, mostly negative. It's a shame that Zack Snyder didn't even finish his, what was it, five film plan from the beginning. It, whatever, it is what it is. This universe is over now. We're going to start over a reboot yet again. I don't know, Ben Affleck, he wasn't in that much, but I thought it was just a little off mm -hmm. for some reason to me. Michael Keaton. Of course, that's what everyone wants to know about. That's the reason I saw the movie. It wasn't for Ezra Miller, it was for Michael Keaton. Michael motherfucking Keaton. It's a big deal to have him back in the suit for me. Never would have believed it. He walked away from the franchise when Tim Burton left, way back in 93 uh, or whatever, when Batman Forever was being developed. Michael Keaton was good. He was this guy was, he's born to play Batman. Like, at least that's what like I think about him when I think of Batman, even though it's not accurate to the comics, but it's like, that's he's Batman. He is Batman. When he says, I'm Batman, because he is Batman. Though there were a couple of lines he delivered, it was just like, eh. Like when he's like, want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. And it just, in the old one, he was just screaming and breaking stuff, and it just didn't have the intensity. I don't know, it just felt a little flat. He's like 80 years old he's now. He's 80, 70. Um, <laughs> but I had no years. problem with Michael Keaton's acting. In the suit, honestly, it looked good. He had no problem. Like, put that suit on. It's like it. It's it's been ten years instead of thirty or however many years it's been. No problem with uh, Michael Keaton's acting. Supergirl. Yeah. And her acting was flat, mediocre. Yeah. She didn't like. And I get it's not the actress's fault, but Man of Steel took a whole movie to sort of develop Superman and yeah. show him and develop his powers and learning. Yes, they didn't have the time to develop her, and mm -hmm. I wasn't fully sure if how long she. Well, we don't want to yeah, talk about the spoiler. That the plot exactly but I wasn't impressed with her I wasn't like mm -mm. mortified or horrific horrified by her but mm -hmm. she was just sort of there like I feel like almost anybody could have filled that role and it would have been fine yeah not what I picture when I picture Supergirl typically she's a young white blonde girl and this is like a Hispanic dark-haired short-haired girl just not I don't think I've ever actually seen Supergirl portrayed this way she always has the straight long blonde hair your typical blue-eyed american white girl just saying so but i didn't i didn't mind that but the actress didn't really do much for me her mm -hmm. portrayal no. i mean those are all the main characters i don't know ezra miller did good yeah michael keaton did, did good ben affleck something felt a little off to me mm -hmm. not that we had a lot of time to judge him and then whatever her name is the supergirl actress eh, eh, just kind of mm -hmm. flat yeah wasn't horrible 
just I mean Zod was Zod was his, pretty similar, but yes, he wasn't I in it that much that. either. No, and he didn't but, look that different. I liked it, but he, no, but he, the voice he played and, Zod at the same tone and like yes. you know mood or whatever exactly did before. Yes, I can't really judge Famer's act, acting. I mean, she was just you know yeah, she didn't speak at all. I, I don't know if I, I she I mean she might have made a couple of grunting noises or something. Yeah, but I never but I don't it, think she yeah. said one word. She was super hot in the other movie, but this one she's definitely like older and yeah, you only see her and, through her like yes, mask thing and too. through that mask you can I, I get it but i'm saying like you don't really get that good of a look yeah. at her like you did in the other films so i mean yeah. acting for me yeah as a whole i'm probably gonna give a seven out of ten ezra miller mm -hmm. probably gonna give me eh. i just feel like eight's maybe too good of a score mm -hmm. but him and keaton probably both like a 7.5 they both did yeah. just fine as far as i was concerned yeah. supergirl Eh, five point five, six. Like you just, I feel like almost anybody could have mm -hmm. been there, yeah. and it would have been exactly the same movie. She didn't add anything like yeah. special or memorable exactly yeah, to not it. Not really, no. And now let's talk about the plot. Now, how do you talk about the plot without talking about the plot? I don't know. So let's just not talk about the plot, but I'll tell you my opinion. There were some cool surprises in it, but the trailer gave me too much. If I had not seen the trailers and watched the movie, oh my god, I would have been blown away by some of the Easter eggs and the references and the visuals. I would have had goosebumps and be like, oh my god, that's so cool. Oh my god, that's so cool. But I already saw like a lot of the like cool, nostalgic, goosebumpy moments nostalgic. in the trailers. And I get it. They're they're wanting to get you in there. They're, and they, they worked. They got me front and center, ready to go. But the plot was kind of predictable i'm not saying like the i didn't know how it was going to end but nothing surprised me really for the most part I mean, no, 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 that is a lie there were some really cool things that surprised yes. me but they were more so like easter eggy stuff than the actual plot of the film the actual plot of the film i mean there were some stuff that i didn't know was going to happen yeah. um from the beginning through almost to the end so mm -hmm. but did i like the plot did i think so I went into this thinking, this is not going to be a good movie. It's going to be fun and have some cool action scenes and have Keaton back in the suit. I'm going to love all that. But I expected it to be a bad movie. It was better than I expected, but I set the bar low as far as... Like, this is no Oscar winner, for sure. There's no Dark Knight or Joaquin Phoenix Joker. And I feel like it's not as good as Batman vs. Superman, but that one has a lot of people mixed on yeah. it. The tone, the seriousness, it's it's different. It's darker It's a Zack than... Snyder movie. This is made by somebody else. I don't even know the director's name off the top of my head. I have to look that up. Some weird name. But it's not as dark, a little more lighthearted. Um, kind of have like a Marvelish feel to it at times, like the humor and, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So the plot of the film... I was cool with the plot. I thought it was a unique premise for the film. I liked that they went back to the events of Man of Steel. That's where this DC Cinematic Universe began and kind of where it's ending. Although I have some confusion. We still have Aquaman 2 coming and then the reboot. I don't fully know. And it seems like they're trying to bring some of the old stuff into the new reboot. It's all very confusing. Time will hopefully shed some light on that. But I like the fact that they went back, revisited a lot of stuff we already saw, kind of put their own little twists on it, their own little spin on it. The plot, the time paradox, all that sort of stuff. I actually think they did a pretty decent job with that. And it had some emotion behind it, too. Like, yes, they did. I like that they had that connection between Barry Allen and Bruce Wayne. Their parents mm -hmm. both killed at a young age. Mm -hmm. Impacted their lives significantly. I don't know. I, the plot, once again, I, I kind of want to give it like a 7 out of 10. I, yeah. It was, it, was, it was not I, bad. I enjoyed it from not fully caring or paying attention to that whole universe type thing, whatever is going on in it. Um, it was really, I enjoyed it. It gives you totally different thoughts and ideas on different universes and worlds. And yeah, it was good. It was fun. It wasn't great Oscar winning, you know, like plot yeah. or performance exactly, but. It delivered on probably for past my expectations at least a little bit. It did me. So, overall, how do we rate the movie and would we recommend it to somebody else? So, first of all, I would definitely recommend this movie to somebody else. It's fun, good time, lighthearted. It's not every day or even every year you get a Batman movie. And I know this is not a Batman movie per se, it's a Flash movie, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a Batman movie. You got two Batman, Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck. It's a big deal. 
We, I think we have the Joker 2 coming next year, probably the Batman 2 coming the year after, and maybe Brave and the Bold the year after that. So there's a lot of Batman content coming in the next several years. I liked it. I would recommend to go see it. There were plenty of things in this movie that I was hoping I would see that didn't happen. Like Ben Affleck, Michael Key interacting. Maybe all the different live-action Batmans coming together for one really cool scene. But that wasn't what this movie was about. I mean, I knew these things weren't going to be in it, but of course... The fanboy in me is like, oh, you never know. So, I would highly recommend, if you have any interest in seeing this movie, whether you like Ezra Miller or you don't, go see it. Yeah, you can probably download it illegally, but it's going to be some crappy called quality version for now. Now That's not going to stop you? Oh, no, 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 I mean, I'll be checking. <laughs> well, then never mind. Um, <laughs> as far as the rating of the movie, now, I've thought about this. Sometimes when you first see a movie, you really like it, and you're kind of having fun. You're kind of riding this high from seeing the movie and seeing, you know, Michael Keaton back in the suit. So, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. As a whole, like, I just feel like if I give a movie 8 out of 10, it's a really good score. It's a really good movie. Like, like Dark Knight, probably like a 9 out of 10. Maybe like a 9.5, that sort of area. This, I'd say, is not worthy of an 8 out of 10, at least in my head. So I'm going to do a 7 out of 10, and maybe I'm overrating it. Maybe over time, when I watch it like two or three more times, I'll think, oh, eh, kind of bring it down, bring it down. Maybe it'll solidify itself. Maybe it'll even be higher. Right now, leaving it, I did leave disappointed. I left thinking, that was fun. That was pretty cool. I don't know if I'd say it's awesome, but, but it was. I just wish that some of the, the stuff was left out of the trailer. It would have been really cool to see, like... Ezra Miller pull a tarp off the Batmobile and see it for the first time and be like, oh shit, look, look at that, it's the Batmobile, it's the one. But I don't regret watching trailers. I, I cannot keep myself from doing that. I don't know, what do you think? I, I give, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 as my sort of final verdict for now, of course. A week from now, a month from now, a year from now, I may feel differently. Right now I'm feeling pretty good about it. Well, I mean, I'm probably not going to watch it again until you force me to um, in a few so months. So tomorrow, got it. <laughs> few months next year maybe um i would definitely do an eight just because you know initial reaction and i enjoyed it i laughed okay um but i would definitely recommend watching like he forces us to every time no, no, no. in our journey with my wife me my son what movies did we watch can you remember them all i made us <laughs> watch plenty of them leading up to this so what's the first one we watched uh batman with michael keaton yes second one Batman Returns. Yes, the third one. Uh, it was Man of Steel. Yes, Man of Steel to set up the new universe and, and then, Zod. And then uh, Batman vs Superman. Yes, Batman vs Superman establishing Ben Affleck in this universe. And then Justice League. Specifically, Snyder's. Yes, Zack Snyder's Justice League, <laughs> which we actually watched in three different watching <laughs> sessions. Which, but those were all movies. That, like, if you want to watch everything you need to know. That would be what you need to watch to prep for this movie. Yeah, you can add other stuff like Wonder Woman and Suicide Squad and like Which... Batman Forever, but it's unnecessary. I probably could have skipped Batman Returns. That was my initial plan, but but I forced you. I to would because say there may have been something <laughs> in it that correlated and all that. I would say if you want to prep for this movie properly, Batman, Batman Returns, Man of Steel, Batman Superman, and then Just Sleep, preferably Zack Snyder's Just Sleep, because there is some stuff that I would say is relevant to this specifically in that version yeah. as far as time travel goes. Setting up some of the abilities that he's learning about in this film. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Another Batman movie under the belt. I know it's a Flash movie, but like I said, as far as I'm concerned, this is a Batman movie. you got two Batmans. One Flash. Well, I guess there's two. Or hey, Spoiler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, go see it. Go support it. I hate to say it, at least from what I've read, this movie looking to be doing pretty poorly financially, and that sucks. Uh, it has a lot of baggage. DC Cinematic Universe has a lot of mixed feelings, a lot of baggage under it. Ezra Miller has a lot of baggage under him as well. Maybe and this whole and the fact that this is like almost the end of this universe, some people are like, eh, what's the point? Because it's getting rebooted, although we don't know what that's gonna look like exactly yet. So but yes. <laughs> so check it out. Drop me a line in the comments below if you guys have seen the movie and if you like the movie. We'll be trying to do a spoiler video tomorrow, maybe the day after, soon. There's a lot of stuff to talk about there, and a lot of stuff that was, frankly, just really cool in the movie. The fact that a bunch of cool stuff doesn't necessarily make it a good movie, but it, it, it helps. A lot of little 
a lot of little and some major yeah. little things. Yeah. <laughs> major, a lot of major little things. <laughs> so, thank you guys for watching this video. D Hunter, lovely wife Patricia. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional movie and action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, D Hunter, my lovely wife Patricia. The Flash movie, go check it out. Thanks for watching.